and let's get Brexit done by October the 31st. Enough is enough. The country wants this done and they want the referendum respected. Order! Order! The no's to the left, 301. Yeah. The body language throughout this evening has been so contemptuous of this House sit and up, of the people. Up. And sit for the up. benefit of Hansard... The only thing that standing, is standing in our, in our way is the undermining of those negotiations by this surrender bill which would lead to more dither and delay. It came by text. It feels a little bit like something that one associates uh, w with other countries. Next year to simplify regulatory barriers. Yeah. I'm not, not going to make any other comment, OK? I'm going to my constituency today to do normal surgeries. Do you want this government to take us out on October the 31st, or do you want Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party to go to that crucial summit in Brussels on October the 17th? You're right. Oh, that's right. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Sorry to bang on about Brexit so much, but anyway, it's got to be done. As many of that opinion will say content, content. the contrary not content, the contents have it. Yeah, we'll go over here. 21 of my colleagues had the whip removed and the reason they had the whip removed is the second reason that made me leave which is they couldn't see sufficient concentration and planning on actually getting a deal. Without the support of a small but superb team in Speaker's House, the wider House staff my Buckingham constituents, and above all, my wife Sally and our three children, Oliver, Freddie, and Jemima. Declare the prorogation of Parliament desire the presence of this honourable house. October the 31st. And what happened after the Battle of Hastings? We've moved, we've moved well, on. The Anglo Saxons got totally exterminated. I mean, it was the most extraordinary cultural mm -hmm. uh, takeover. Uh, yeah. Claimed the throne of England. Exactly. Well oh, done. And then he ratted on the on the on the end. Mm, exactly. Yeah. So he was furious. So that was why the scene was set for an almighty three-way tussle. To prorogue Parliament from 9th September to 14th October was unlawful and that therefore the prorogation itself is unlawful. I'm all in favour of our, I'm all in favour of our MPs. Uh, why, are you, why are you not with them in Parliament? Would you? the mess that you have created. I spoke to him at length about it and I said, Boris, you've never been in favour of leaving the EU. So why now there's a better deal offer, are you in favour of leaving now? We need more than just words. Yes. I hope it's a tab 19. It does not have, I'm afraid, a page number. There are not enough people on this war. There are not enough doctors. There are not enough nurses. It's not well organised enough. The NHS has been destroyed. It's been destroyed. It's been destroyed. And now you come here for a press opportunity. Well, actually, there's no press here. There. What do you mean there's no press here? But no reason at all for proroguing for five weeks, let alone for five critical weeks in a period in which time is of the essence. You and your office stand accused of repeatedly doing taxpayer-funded favours against official advice for a very close friend of yours, Jennifer R. Curie. The court is bound to conclude, therefore, 
that the decision to advise Her Majesty to prorogue Parliament was unlawful. There's been a court case uh, in our country uh, this morning, which I, I think one or two of you, may, of you may have picked up on the on the media. Some of your critics are saying that you should resign because you misled the Queen with regard to shutting Parliament down. Who's that? I'll tell you, I know him well. He's not going anywhere. Don't worry about him. I have instructed the House authorities to prepare, not for the recall, the prorogation was unlawful and is void, to prepare for the resumption of the business of the House of Commons. This Parliament is a disgrace. This Parliament is a dead Parliament. It should no longer sit. And we stand here, Mr Speaker, under the shield of our departed friend, with many of us in this place subject to death threats and abuse every single day. I have to say, Mr Speaker, I've never heard such humbug in all my life. Because Both sides, passions were inflamed, angry words were uttered, the culture was toxic. We're friends in this pressure, we're friends in this difficult. This is a walk in the park. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much. There seems to be some enthusiasm in this hall for getting Brexit done. Prime Minister, it has been alleged that you touched the thigh of a woman at a lunch without her permission. Did you? No, and uh, I think what the public want to hear is about what we're doing to level up and unite the country. The Right Honourable Gentleman mentions uncertainty. Well, the only people who are generating uncertainty in this place are the opposition. It is they who are selling this country short. They won't vote for a deal, they won't vote for no deal, and they won't vote for a general election. And what happened after the Battle of Hastings? We've moved, far, we've moved well, on. The Anglo-Saxons got totally exterminated. I mean, it was the most extraordinary cultural uh, takeover.